Texelo Cellos has framework. A brief intro to Texelo. It's a multi-tenant application development platform which can help you build multi-tenant applications in a rapid manner. In today's session, we are going to look at three parts. The first part will be about installing Cellosas framework and how to go about getting it up running. Second part will look into the aspect of building a small functionality, a small application using the Cellosas framework and again how to execute it and view it. The third part we look at utilizing some of the tenant capability features of Cellosas framework and we'll see how that can be leveraged towards building the application functionality. So that's the uh, agenda for today's uh, this particular training video. So before we get started let's take a quick look at the prerequisites and uh, you will be requiring .NET 4 version as well as MVC 3. You could use the Visual Studio 2010 or the Web Developer 2010 Express for developing applications using Cellosas framework. And Cellosas uh, particularly uses the guidance automation extension and toolkit. So make sure that you have that uh, available in your environment. And for more detailed uh, information, there is this uh, developer's guide available in the highlighted URL. So you could download and look for more details into it. So with that, let's get started with our first part of installing Cellosas framework and getting it up running. So let's first explore the install package. So you have three folders inside the install package. Installer folder contains the necessary installation package files available. So you just have to uh, execute each one of them and uh, ensure that it's successfully running. DB scripts contains the necessary table structure for usage of Cellosas framework. So it has both the DDL and DML structures. And this folder contains the out of box functionalities that comes along with the Cellosas application. So now let's go ahead and um, see how to run the, the DDL and DML scripts so that we can see the kind of tables it produces. So let's go into DB scripts. So I'm taking the DDL DML files and I have created a blank database SMS um, cello SAS. That's the blank database I've created where I want cello tables to be residing. So I'm using that as a target environment and running the scripts. So now I have run it successfully. And now if I go and look at the table structure, these are the tables that have been created by the script. So all these tables if you look at represent uh, the tables that are used by Cellos as functionality or it could be tables used for storing metadata information of the main application that you will be building. So with that we can open Visual Studio and let's see how to create um, a new project. So um, Visual Studio, uh, we, there is a specific uh, utility, the guidance package, which we'll see shortly. So when you create a new project, you do go through your regular route of uh, file new project. And here, you will have to select the guidance package option. Under that, you have Cellos as package. Now this is a, a specific package created by Cellos as, and it basically understands the various layers, the various components that are required for the Celestas kind of a project and it creates it for you by default. So we have selected that and we have given OK. And it asks for some basic details like project name. And now the guidance package is going ahead and creating all the necessary layers, the folder structures and the necessary high level kind of uh, base files that are required, all in accordance to the standards and the architecture defined in the Cellosas framework. So it's basically trying to get you head start with the project creation and get it rolling. So once we have the um, file created, let's ensure that we are updating the connection string. So I'm going ahead and uh, taking a copy of my connection string. So when it uh, 
when you're doing it at your end, ensure that um, you're updating this in the SQL config file. So this should uh, be over any time now. And uh, we also saw running this on against a database. Um, we saw the DDL and DML scripts run against a particular database. Uh, you could either have both your application and cellular SAS tables on the same database or you could have it in two different databases. So when we are updating the connection strings shortly, we will see that there are two parameters, two properties to indicate the application database and the cellular SAS database. So let's uh, give it a second to show up and then we can go ahead and edit the SQL config files. So here it is created and if you look at uh, this structure over here, you can see it has created a service layer, model layer, DAL, as well as the standard web application layer is also available to it by default. So let's go ahead and edit the SQL config. And uh, as I was mentioning, there is something called the application connection string and cellular SAS connection string, the line item 1 and 2. Um, so basically it represents a point to the databases where you want to keep your application related tables versus the cellular SAS related tables. There are a few other options like workflow and metering which we will see it in the forthcoming training videos. So for now, um, you just focus on these two things. So now I have saved and uh, let me go ahead and build the solution. So what I have done now is basically created a blank project using the cellular SAS guidance package and it generated me the necessary layers and along with that I also get the out of box functionalities from the cellular SAS framework. So once we are successfully building, we can also go ahead and run this application and you would be seeing that without even writing a single line of code, you will already see a login screen and then once you log in, you will see a set of functionality readily available for you which can be consumed by the user. So here we go, it's successfully built. Let's go ahead and run this application and again it's a blank empty project that we created using the cellular SAS package and let's see what cellular SAS package brings it along when we run this blank application. So it's going to take few seconds for the first time as it's going to be executing all these files. There we go, we have uh, got the login page. So by default, uh, Celosas framework comes with uh, a product uh, admin login and the credentials of it are available as part of the documentation. So we are going to use that credential and we are trying to log in. So as you can see, you are already getting a login page uh, with the default UI that comes with Celosas framework. And all the UI that, are, that we are going to see now are completely available to be customized or replaced by any other UI that you would like to have. So it's a completely layered architecture so you can replace the, the presentation layer completely with uh, your presentation layer or you could modify the themes or UI of it. 
So here we see there are already a few menu items that you can see. Each of the menu items represent a certain functionality, a certain module or certain feature which we will go through it in a later session. So for now we will just uh, close this application, we will log off and then we will come back to the Visual Studio. So what we just saw was the part one of installing Cello SAS framework and uh, getting it running and we just saw the out of box functionalities that we got without even writing a single line of code. So with that we will move to the second part of the training. Um, this part is going to be focused on building a small hello world kind of an application. So using the cello SAS framework. So let's get started. Uh, we are going to also going to use something called the code generator feature of uh, cello SAS framework. So you already see there is something called the code generator which is appearing on the as part of the solution file. And there is also a, a solution, uh, a code generator designer which is the center screen that you see. And then you have a toolbox for that. So basically using this toolbox you could visually create a module feature and associate the necessary layers into it which once you do you could use it to convert or generate the file using that representation. So here we are going to attempt to create an application called student management system. A simple student management system with uh, probably just a single feature. So let me drag and drop the feature. So you could have one or more features for that module. For the demonstration purpose this we are just using one feature. So I am entering the student feature. The next step is to associate the entities that are going to be consumed in this particular feature. So here I am going to use an entity called student. So you should have created a table called student in the database. Um, so here there is a database called SMS app. So this is my application database. So here I have created already a table called student. If you, you could create any table you would like to. So just ensure that you are mentioning the right entity details over here in the properties for that particular toolbox component. And then I am also mentioning the DAL layers, the interface and the class for my DAL layer. And following the DAL layer, I am going to use the service, I'm defining the service class names that I would like to create. So as you could already see, it's a very interactive visually um, designing tool. However, please do not expect this to be like a rad kind of a tool. That's not the intention of this particular code generator. Rather, it's more intended towards allowing the developers to have a jump start on developing the functionality instead of spending time on the crude low level activities. So we, after the service we have also created the, the controller and we also added a, a form and grid view. You, or you also have options for form view and grid view in which case they just represent the form or a grid. But there is also something called a form and grid view which can show both on the same page. So we have updated all the properties. Let's just recheck it once. So we created the service, controller, and finally the form. And ensure that you are updating in the code generation the TT file the path of where the code generator should place all the generated source code files. So I have updated that part as well. Now let me go ahead and apply transform all templates. So this process actually takes up the visual design that I just did and then it tries to apply that or convert that into the text templates that are already predefined by Cello SAS. It is available as part of the uh, installation. So these are pure text based templates which means uh, in fact the developers also can go ahead and modify these text based templates. Maybe they want to change certain things. They could feel free to do that. So these templates are kind of applied and based on that the 
files are getting generated. So as you, as you could see, the files are getting populated in the Solution Explorer. The various files that are required to achieve the module feature and the all the layers that we just talked about and also creating the UI with a form and grid view kind of a interface. So here we go, we are able to see all those files, so various C sharp files and the necessary SQL and config files are all generated. So the next step, let me go ahead and copy these files to the actual location where I want to build the student management system application. Then I will also go ahead and copy the view and controllers. And as the last step, I'm going to copy the configuration files. Creating a new folder here, configuration. I'm going to paste those files in this folder. Copy it and paste it in the configuration folder. So the next step, let me go ahead and start including all the new files that was generated by the code generator. I'm going to include them into the project solution. So this ensure that you are doing it across all the layers so that you are not missing out any of the files that have got generated. So we are just including the C sharp files as well, the controller files. Then let's try rebuilding the solution. So the next step, uh, we just have to ensure the references are properly set. So you need to cross-reference it correctly if you are not getting any errors. As you could uh, imagine, this is purely to get uh, the developers started pretty quickly. And uh, we just saw that uh, creating a module and set of features, uh, all the base files, we were able to create it in a few seconds, in fact. Um, of course, there is going to be some amount of uh, um, editing or some amount of work on top of it. But then the developers are now going to be fully productive because they are going to right away start working on the UI and embedding the business functionalities and so on. So we call it as one of the productivity enhancement uh, features available in CelloSAS. So we have some more references to complete.
you are done with the reference association to a computer rebuild. So you got it successfully built. Now again, um, what we did was we used the code generator. We created a, a particular feature, student feature, and uh, we have included the necessary reference. And as a last step, you should also go ahead and run this particular script file available as part of the code generation. This is basically to provide the necessary access for the product admin itself to access this new feature that we have developed using the code generator. And along with that also ensure that the entity config setting is permission config is set up, set properly that way you have access to this new feature that we have created. And so last step we need to update the sitemap so that the navigation links show up for me to access this new module that I have created. Okay, next step, I am also updating the global ASX file with the new module that I have created now. basically register the, the new module that I have created. And as it could uh, it see so far we have not written any explicit lines of code. So it's primarily around the configuration capabilities of CelloSAS that we have been using to build this Hello World application. So we'll, let's go ahead and rebuild it. Let's see if everything comes out well. There we go, you successfully built it. Now let's go ahead and uh, run this application now. So just like the previous time, um, we just ran it with a blank project. This time we are running it with a module that we have created and a feature that we have created. And the feature should allow me to manage students and which means that I should be able to add a new student, I should be able to update existing students or even delete some of the students. So these are the standard the crude functionalities that uh, typically any feature will have. So that's what we are going to see it now when it shows up.
let's wait for the application to come up now. And again, we'll be using the product admin. Login to log to log in into the product into the application, and then we'll see along with the other out of box modules and functionalities that are available as part of the Cellular framework. We will also see the module link for the new module that we have created, which is the student management system. And using that link, we can navigate into our module, and we can see the the functionalities, the basic crude functionalities for updation, creation of updation, and viewing as well. Deletion. We have the login again. I'm entering the super admin, which is the product admin credential. Trying to log in now. So there we go, we get the menu structure and along with that menu structure we are able to see the, the navigation links for the new module SMS and the new feature that I created, Manage Student. However, when I try to access it, as you could see, it says permission to access this is denied. That is because the product admin, while he is the product admin, he should explicitly go and allocate the necessary privileges to access this feature. So only two people can do that, the product admin as well as the tenant admin. So those two uh, roles have the capacity or the privilege to go ahead and assign privileges to themselves and then they can go ahead and use those features. So I'm selecting the module SMS and I'm selecting all the functionalities, all the privileges and I have assigned it to myself. And now when I click manage student I can see the UI for that particular feature which encompasses a form in the top. It can be used to add new students as well as in the bottom there should be a grid uh, that should appear but right now since there are no records we don't see that. Let's go ahead and try to add this record now. And there we go we see the grid in the bottom as well. So as you could see the entire UI, uh, the grid that we see all of that comes out of box from the CellSAS framework. And as I mentioned, the developers can absolutely feel free to go ahead and change this whichever they want, whichever UI they want to use. And uh, the ordinals of these, uh, order of these fields can also be changed. You can mention the ordinals as to which order these fields should appear. So according to that, the, the UI rendering will take care of the ordinals part as well. Now, so that completes our second part. So we saw how to use code generator to visually design a module feature and then we generated the code using that and we did the cross reference of uh, the projects and we just ran the application. Again, no lines of code written. And we saw that we are already able to see a feature listed as part of the main product and we are able to add, edit and delete records to the UI that's produced by Celosa framework. So let's go ahead uh, to part three where uh, in the real time scenario we are going to offer this particular module and feature to my customers which basically means that uh, I'm going to create new tenants and then I'm going to assign this particular module to them. So before that let me go ahead and create the package. Package is nothing but uh, I might have um, a set of modules available as part of my product. So I might probably pick and choose a set of modules to make a logical sense or logical grouping which as a package can be assigned or kind of bought by my customers. So as you could see this package screen it lists all the modules that are available inclusive of the ones that are as part of Telosas framework. So you could see data backup, notification, chart, configuration in the module de details section. All are out of box modules. But you will also see SMS listed there. 
the third from the last. So that is the module that I am going to be explicitly creating a package for. So maybe I'll just select few more things and I'm selecting SMS now. And few other uh, features that I would like to provide. So all of this gets registered as part of the package. So any tenant who is willing to buy this package, they will be able to access all of these features that are and modules that are mentioned here. So in SMS there is only one thing called student feature. Now assignable modules is an um, is a feature by itself which comes into play during tenant hierarchy. We will see that a bit later. Let me go ahead and save this package. Now I am done with creating a package, a premium package. It has few of the modules, out of box modules plus the SMS module that I have created. Next step, let me go ahead and create some customers. Let's assume that I have two customers who have bought this particular module. So I'm going to first create those customers as tenants within my system so that they are recognized as a tenant and this whole product can work in a multi-tenant fashion recognizing them as a customer and exhibiting the necessary behavior. So let me go ahead and add a new tenant. It's going to ask for some basic uh, level of information. So like the tenant code I would like to have. So let's assume I'm creating Harvard, Harvard as one of the tenant was shown interest to buy this particular module, student management system. And this URL is something where you can have a, a kind of subdomain for your tenant. So I'm also specifying some billing related information, contact information. Once I'm done with this basic detail, so here is where I specify the details of the tenant admin, which is kind of the admin for that particular customer. So for Harvard, I'm going to by default create a tenant admin who can then log in and do the next set of activities which is basically creating more users or setting the other configuration details. So that is also set and now more importantly I am assigning the package, premium package because that is where I have mentioned SMS is part of the package. Now I am mapping the package to the tenant and I can also specify the number of users that are allowed in this particular tenant. So I am going ahead and saving it. So I have created Harvard with this package. So let's next log in as this tenant admin whom we just created now. And uh, just like how we saw from a product admin perspective earlier, let's see from a tenant admin. So this is a password reset screen. So anybody other than the product admin logging in for the first time is going to ask for a, a password reset. So here I go, I have logged in as the hardware admin which is the tenant admin and I can still see the module SMS and the feature manage student. But again same problem, I don't have the permission. So as a tenant admin I can go to the same uh, roles and assign the privilege for accessing the student features. So add myself feature and now again I am able to add a student, I can see the form and grid view. So we also just show how you can create a, a new customer into this product in the form of adding a new tenant and the package option that we created also gives us the flexibility to create any combination of mix and match modules that you would like to have. So here we go, you are able to save a record again from a tenant admin perspective. But in reality, it's the users that are going to be using this particular feature. So let's try and go, let's try ahead and go and create two users in Harvard tenant. 
and we will also in the process try to set different kind of access controls for these two users that way one user can say for example uh, edit and view the records whereas another user can do all the operations just addition deletion viewing as well as updating so I'm here in the user management screen again this user management screen is out of box coming out readily for you to start keying in the values so I'm creating a user Joseph spam again entering some basic details there I go and save that user Joseph Sam so let me also go ahead and create the second user Danny Joe so all these basic plumbing related functionality user management tenant management package management these are a few of the big list of features that Cellosas framework comes or brings to the product. Now as a next step let me go ahead and assign different privileges for these two guys so that's where I can see the variation of how the security control mechanism functions uh, within Cellosas framework. So for that let me go ahead and define the role first. So I'm creating a role called student coordinator right so which is say slightly a lower role from an operation perspective and then let me also go ahead and create another role called student administrator which is a superlative role which means administrator can basically do anything whereas a coordinator can do only few activities so role is done but more importantly we have to set the privileges which is what will define what this role can do and cannot do let me go to the student administrator So I'm going to give everything for the student administrator because he can do anything. Whereas for the student coordinator, so here is where I'm going to remove some of the privileges. So here I have add, edit, delete, view. So I'm going to remove edit and delete here. Which means this particular user can add and view existing students. So we're done with creation of user, creation of role and defining the privileges. Now the next step is to map this role to the users that we have created. So I'm going to manage role of Joseph Hartwood and let him be the administrator. So Joseph becomes the administrator now and Danny is going to become a coordinator. So we are done, creation of two users. Let's go ahead and log off as the tenant admin of Harvard and let us allow the actual users to log in into the system. And let's first log in as the coordinator, Danny. And let's see from his perspective how the system is going to apply the privilege settings, security settings that we have defined. There's a password reset. So just to, for us to remember, we have allowed um, Danny to do addition and viewing of student records. In the first step, we have to provide access to this particular user. So let's go ahead and modify the config file, entity permission file, to include, because right now it's only at tenant admin level, so let's go ahead and include the view student permission as well. Okay, so we are done. So now we have got the SMS module appearing. Then let's go ahead and try a manage student. So 
he is able to see the form as well as the grid because we gave him add and view permission. So let's go ahead and add a student. And let's try saving it. It should allow me to save because Danny has add privileges being a coordinator. So on the grid you can see the added record, but you would also have noticed that the grid does not have the edit and delete options appearing for him. That's because he doesn't have the edit and delete privileges. So he can only add and then view the list of records that are already available in the system. So let's log off from here and log in as the administrator which is Joseph. Now Joseph is going to try to access the same privilege. Now you can already see that the grid is appearing, all the old records are showing up and you can also see the edit and delete columns appearing for him which means Joseph can do all the operations because he has the complete privileges assigned to him. So you could imagine uh, what it uh, helps from a, from a development perspective because it's completely configurable, controllable through the administration screen. So at any point in time you want to remove access or you want to grant access, all of that can be done through interface, through runtime and the rest of the system will automatically function according to the settings that have been given. So that brings us to the end of the third part which is creating a set of tenants, uh, creating some packages to include the model we created, creating some users on a tenant and then we also saw how the security settings can be applied to and to yield different working conditions for different users from an access control perspective. So that's about it for this uh, training video we have and uh, look forward to see you on an, another training video where we'll go through in detail the features of Celosa. Thank you.